When discussing the affliction that lies ahead for the world during the Antichrist's rule on this planet, many believers readily ponder the rapture. The rapture is an apocalyptic event where Jesus Christ gathers his congregation. And this raises a great debate within Christianity, not about the rapture itself, but about the moment in which it will occur. Some scholars propose that the rapture will take place before the tribulation period. Others maintain that it will take place in the middle of this period, that is, after three and a half years. The third group believes that Christians will face everything that will happen during the seven years of the Antichrist's government on earth. The reality is that many individuals are not very aware of the rapture and end up generating perplexity about the events of the end times. Therefore, in this video, I will present the different points of view on the rapture of the church, and at the end, I will share my opinion on this topic. Before we go any further, I want to ask that you kindly leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell to receive notifications whenever I post a new video on YouTube. I have made new videos available with prayers and messages of faith to help you on your journey with God. So come walk with us every day. Now, let's move forward. The first perspective is the pre-tribulationist view. This group of thinkers believes that the Church of Christ will be raptured before the Great Tribulation. For them, as soon as the Antichrist orchestrates a great peace treaty between the three largest religions in the world and becomes the most charismatic figure on the planet, all who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior will be instantly raptured to heaven and spared the suffering to come. They cite several biblical passages that, according to them, corroborate this perspective. One of the most robust arguments lies in the fact that, while chapters 1, 2, and 3 of Revelation mention the Church of Christ 19 times, chapters 4 to 19 make no mention of it, but deal with the tribulation that will occur on earth. Additionally, Jesus' promise to the Philadelphia Church is cited as a basis for this view. We read in Revelation chapter 3, because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation that will come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Note that Jesus says, I will guard against the hour of temptation, not in the hour of temptation, which suggests that the rapture will happen before the tribulation. The Apostle Paul also offers teachings that support the pre-tribulation rapture. He mentions it at least twice in his first letter to the Thessalonians, once in chapter 1, verse 10, and once in chapter 5, verse 9. On both occasions, Paul states that Jesus will deliver us from the wrath to come, demonstrating thus his desire to spare us suffering. The Apostle Peter also argues that God will rescue his people from this people from this period of tribulation, just as he rescued Noah from the flood and lot from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. He says, For the Lord knows how to deliver the godly from temptation and to reserve the unrighteous for the day of judgment. This suggests that the righteous will be rescued before the tribulation. Another important point for pre-tribulationists is that the Israelites are not considered part of the Church of Christ as they do not recognize him as the Son of God. Therefore, they will go through the great tribulation and those who remain faithful to God and give themselves to Jesus will be persecuted, but they will be saved when Christ returns with his church. The second perspective is the mid-tribulationist view. Mid-tribulationists defend the idea that the church will go through the first half of the tribulation, that is, three and a half years of the total seven years. The main argument is that the church needs to be tested to demonstrate its faithfulness to God in adverse times. However, they find no solid biblical basis for this view, but base it on the notion that Christians must go through trials to confirm their faith, just as the apostles of the past faced terrible persecution without reneging on their faith. Mesotribulationists rely mainly on two biblical passages. The first is in Matthew chapter 24 which states that he who endures to the end will be saved. They interpret this passage as indicating that the church will be persecuted by the Antichrist. However, 
It is worth pointing out that the chapter in Matthew 24 that addresses the Great Tribulation applies primarily to the Jews, not the church. The second passage that mid-tribulationists cite is in Revelation chapter 11, verse 11, which deals with the two witnesses. This excerpt describes the witnesses being caught up to heaven after three and a half years, which for mid-tribulationists suggests the timing of the rapture of the church. However, the passage specifies that only the two witnesses are the arbated, not the whole church. The third perspective is the post-tribulationist view. According to this approach, the Church of Christ will not be raptured before or during the Great Tribulation, but will face all the sufferings described in the Bible during the seven years preceding the second coming of Jesus and the final judgment. Post-tribulationists believe that despite the difficulty, true Christians will endure all suffering thanks to God's power and mercy. They hold that the rapture will occur at or near the end of the Great Tribulation, with the church meeting Christ in the heavens and returning with Him to establish His kingdom on earth almost simultaneously. Post-tribulationists argue that the Great Tribulation involves not only God's wrath against sinners, but also Satan's wrath against the saints, that is, the Church of Christ. They cite a passage from Revelation 13 that talks about the perseverance and faithfulness of the saints as evidence of their vision. Furthermore, they highlight that Jesus, when talking about the end times, stated that he would return after a great tribulation. In the book of Revelation, which contains several prophecies, only one coming of the Lord is mentioned, and that coming occurs after the tribulation. They also note that the resurrection of the dead in Revelation 20 verse 5 is called the first resurrection, which suggests that the resurrection associated with the rapture, mentioned in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16, cannot occur earlier. In summary, my opinion on the rapture of the church is that we Christians who love Jesus and serve him with all our hearts will be raptured to heaven when the Antichrist appears, that is, before the tribulation begins. I believe that we will not go through the seven years of tribulation on earth, as the Bible states that those who are in Christ are not subject to condemnation and will not experience the wrath of God, but will be in glory with our Lord and Savior, who gave his life in cross to rescue and save us. However, I respect the other two perspectives and emphasize that the Christian's focus should be on preaching the gospel, concern for his own salvation, and avoiding unnecessary contention. The Bible declares that Jesus' return will be majestic and glorious. During his first coming, he came humbly and was rejected by men. But one day, he will return as King of kings and Lord of lords. On that day, the whole world will recognize the true identity of Jesus. Therefore, regardless of whether the rapture occurs before, during or after the Great Tribulation, we must be constantly prepared, awaiting the moment when we will be taken to heaven, where we will live alongside the Father for all eternity. Amen. If you found this video useful, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to my channel.